Hello Floss Tube, Gira 80 or Gemma um, here with a long awaited um, cross stitch video. So the reasons for me not posting for technically the last two months. Um, to start with, uh, I have been really busy at work. My job role has changed, which means that when I got, got home, I was um, revising as such um, to try and get myself up to speed with what was going on at work. So yeah, um, my life has revolved around work at the moment and obviously squeezing in family, so not much stitchy time. So as for March, there really wasn't, at the time, there really wasn't hardly any progress. I hardly stitched at all in March. Um, and then April literally has come and gone and I've run out of time. <laughs> so technically this would have been my April video, but I literally run out of time in April. So um, thank you to all my uh, subscribers and to anyone that's following me on Instagram. Um, I do really still appreciate um, all your kind words and things like that and I also still enjoy all the floss tube videos I always seem to manage to squeeze those in so I'm technically I believe I'm up to date on those um, and hello to any new floss tubers um, it's been really great learning about um, your experiences and um, obviously sharing techniques and things like that and um, I'm going to endeavour to um, speak more about my choices um, when I'm choosing particular when I'm using particular projects or choosing particular products um, because um, rather than just assume that you would know I don't know why I would assume that but you would know why I was picking certain things or anything like that so I'm going to make it a little bit more in depth so I'm hoping this won't be a super long video but knowing me that's always possible um, excuse for the no makeup I, I believe I've got a problem with my eye, <laughs> so I thought I'd best not put any makeup on today. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm really excited because literally as of about half an hour ago, I dropped off my Dragon Quaker sampler to the framers. I know that was meant to be planned in January, that just kind of gives you an idea of what's been going on. Um, so. Uh, that's literally been dropped off at the framers, paid for, so hopefully in two to three weeks time it will be ready for me to collect. Um, after having a discussion with them, obviously other than picking the frame um, of my choice, um, after having a discussion with them they do actually pin and um, tapestry tape the back. Uh, they don't lace anymore um, because they felt that it wasn't as accurate um, and that pinning would be better. Um, so that's fine by me and Tara C's videos on how to frame are absolutely excellent I would recommend that you go look at those um, but uh, if you can remember or have seen any of my past videos this Dragon Quaker sampler it's quite big so you know you think I'll quite happily try that with a, a smaller project and to do it myself but not with this one because it was it was quite unwieldy and I felt that I might be um, slightly out of my depth in that um, account so to the stitching what we're more interested in so what have I been up to um, mainly working on the Mirabilia I do tend to only work on one product at a time um, but as if you have followed my videos um, because of work and um, things like that um, my stitchy bug did slightly take a kick in um, and because I tried new te techniques which I'm really pleased about with the Mirabilia and I am pleased with them now it was starting to kill my stitchy bug a little bit so I had to um, I made a decision to um, take on another project I also do the Country Cottage um, needlework ornaments um, so but they're like if I can get to stitch them sort of on a roll then they only take like a day and a half to stitch so it's not a problem um, so they're like little projects which were great because they were giving me a little break in between um, my Mirabilia and I'd wait for them to come through every month um, but I was just I, I needed to I stitched to chill out and it uh, relaxes me and the mirror wasn't making me feel that way 
However, I've now, now it's in the month of May and I was hoping that she'd be finished. Um, I'm actually starting to really get the stitchy bug back for her. So um, I'm going to go with that. I've actually got a week off um, in May as well. So other than, you know, going out on a couple of days and things like that, I plan on focusing on the mirror with the hope of getting her finished. I mean, if she's not finished, it's not the end of the world. But, um, you know, it would be nice um, to get her finished so that I could bring something else in to my rotation. Um, I don't rotate three weeks. That just wouldn't work for me because um, because of my work commitments and because of stuff that goes on at home like your normal family life and the rest of it. It might be that if I was to say on my first week focus on my mirabilia it might be that I can't, I don't have time to pick it up and then it almost gets lost. Um, in the rotation so I think what I tend to do is set myself little targets on or on the pattern and then that way if it takes me two weeks to get to reach that target before I put it back down again you know then that's fine and at least they're about like the projects that I've got I've at least had um, time spent on them and I feel like they've had adequate time rather than actually a time restraint so anyway um, I suppose my mirabilia first. I've just taken it off the frame because like I said I am working on it so and at the, I am parking on the bottom part because it, I felt that it would be easier for me to do that. So here's my progress so far. Now, with the, this isn't the easiest thing, I still can't get used to this. With the wings, I, this is a Crafty Kitten fabric, it's on Mottled Sage and it's 32 count. With the wings, um, there was a mixture of a lot of Krennic and blending filaments, and actually, you can't really see. But um, there'll be all beads going around the outside, but as it was the outside of the wings, I didn't particularly need to feel the need to bead right away. There is an awful lot of beading on this Mirabilia pattern, as there are on a lot of Mirabilias to be fair. Um, so, and I was concentrating more on the centre because she's sort of holding a ribbon that's all beaded. And as I was stitching, um, I felt it easier to bead. I would do a row of stitches and then bead because otherwise I'd find it more difficult to um, it's just me, but I find it more difficult to stay in place with my patterns and things. So um, I, that's why some of it's beaded, but some of it isn't. So it's not completely beaded as of yet, um, obviously, because it's not finished. But I mean, like, I haven't done the outside of the wings because I know the beads are going around the outside of the wings. So I'll do that after. Um, whereas if the beads were actually in the pattern, um, I've beaded it. So um, first things first. Um, this calls for a lot of Krennic and blending filament. The blending filament, mainly, obviously mainly in her wings, um, is more of a, to me, is more of a texture. It is a colour, but it's very hard to see. It's like it catches the light. I'm trying to find the best way to do it. It's like it catches the light rather than actually be a colour as such and I don't think that's down to fabric because if I picked the fabric that was recommended it was more of a natural um, fabric uh, colour like a raw colour so it wouldn't have made much difference if that was backing on it I think the idea is that it is meant to be more of a um, sort of something that reflects and catches the light every now and again a bit like a dragon's fly wing which would make much more sense as she's fairy wings um, it did also call for um, a Krennic that did have a slight colour. I do, as preference, prefer Petite Treasure Braid. This is the one that goes uh, with this particular Mirabilia. I did change it out because this one's not listed on the pattern. You can get conversions online. Um, I'm not, I don't have the stash acquisition to be able to totally match up and change the Petite Treasure Braid. Um, but if I can see on the conversion online that um, there is one in place then I, out of preference, will always choose 
the Petite Treasure Braid over Krennic. Um, it's softer, it's really hard to describe but it's a lot softer um, which is why I prefer it. I mean it does have kinks and I know people have mentioned the kinks, that is quite annoying. But um, whereas Krennic actually comes, I've, I've moved some, the Krennic actually comes on spools which is obviously you don't get the kinks quite so much but it, as you can see it is quite, I don't know if you can see that, it's a lot thicker. Um, in comparison so um, I prefer the softer um, petite treasure parades and if I can find the conversion and they say or oh, like this is the credit conversion if you want to change it to uh, petite treasure braid then I will do that I will convert it out which is what I did there but it was only one that I could actually find as the conversion so everything else I've used the blending filament that was a chronic um, you've got the gold here which was a chronic um, and there was also um, this black on the bottom of, well it's not black but that's what it looks like on the bottom of, of her wings where I've outlined um, that's also a Krennic but looking at the pattern I may actually take that out and replace it with the um, Petite Treasure Braid it will um, I just think that the outline will be a little bit softer and she has actually like a dragonfly got veining they want her to have veining going through the wings and I just think that they they recommend that you use this black and I just think it's a little bit for me it would be too harsh but each to their own um, so I'm thinking oh if I um, sort of outline where it was requested in the petite treasure braid and do the veining in the petite treasure braid then it will just be a lot softer and gentle which uh, suits me um, I stitched her skin for those that are wondering um, I stitched her skin one over one this is what nearly killed my stitchy bug um, it was a mission I am really pleased with how it's come out um, and I'm pleased with what the what it looks like, the overall look, and I'm pleased that I've tried it. Um, you can never say never, and the more I look at her now, now the horrors of it passing has uh, faded with time, um, I would sort of look at it and go, actually I'd like to do that again. But I, I'd have to think about it, I really have to think about it, um, because it was a bit of a mission to do, and it takes four times as long. Um, just for those that don't know, on the pattern, it is never charted, or in, in for, for this particular Mirabilia, it isn't charted to be stitched one over one on the skin. So for each square, um, it is the equivalent of four stitches. Um, so if you're, if you're doing it on an even weave or a linen or anything like that on a high account, then it would be rather than go two over, uh, it would rather than go one over two or two over two as it suggests you're doing one over one so that's the equivalent of four stitches um, yeah that so it takes four times as long obviously to stitch a piece and it's quite hard on the eyes I would recommend a magnifying glass which is something I don't have um, that may have helped a lot more with um, you know me feeling not losing my stitch bug so much because it was my eyes started to just blend into trying to focus on it so yeah I would I think maybe if I was going to consider doing it again I would invest in a magnifying glass um, so yeah I mean as to the beads as stitching along as I go this is quite heavily beaded as you can tell I'm actually still in the process of beading um, all in this ribbon area here once once that's actually done her dress just carries on as normal stitches other than a couple of little beads just on the hem of her dress which is absolutely fine like the wings i'll do that last that's that's not a problem um and at the very very end there's actually 21 um what they call uh, mill hill sorry crystal treasures um 21 individual items in total so again I've never done these before so it will be an experience uh, for me with these but um, I don't know if you can see it's like leaves and stuff so yeah it's actually quite bead heavy once it's finished or once it will be finished but um, I'm pleased pleased with how it's um, looking
and I'm pleased that I've got my stitchy bug back for it. It is actually for a really good friend of mine, or the plan of action is that it's going to be for a really good friend of mine. And I've spoken to the framers about it, and and because I'm not sure how proud the beads, not necessarily the seed bead style Mill Hill, but the, the, obviously because there's these crystal treasures on it, and some of them are like Swarovski crystal droplet type ones. Um, I'm not sure how proud they'll sit of the fabric, but she said bring it in and and they might put like things in the frame to obviously make it sit back a bit more and these sort of things. They can do all of that, which is I suppose why you go to a framer's. But yeah, otherwise this may have had, if I was considering framing it myself, this might have been a piece where I don't put glass on the frame. Um, because you wouldn't be able to squish it. it, it all get, I mean people say about Mill Hill beads possibly getting squished. And the treasures are just going to be too fat so um, and then you just worry about daily um, wear and tear on on the frame if it's going to be exposed so yes that's my Mill Hill and my thoughts on the project um, up to date so hopefully I will do a bit more of an um, more of a focus on trying to keep up to date with my videos I really do appreciate everyone commenting but it's also really helpful for me because I can see what my progress is and how I'm feeling and how my plans change and the rest of it so it's also like a, a video log for me as well um, although I do enjoy sharing my experience with all you fellow floss tubers um, so I do really need to try and keep on top of um, my filming for um, my hobby. So the next thing to discuss, well what's been done, um, I'm going to show you the Country Cottage Needlework Ornaments um, because they are they are something that I do monthly and like I said I actually got very very behind with these, well very yeah quite, yeah, um, very very behind with these. I, none of these are finished um, because I want to make all of them because I'm planning on turning them into a Christmas bunting so I wanted to do all the projects when I turn them into bunting I want all the projects together because it would just I just feel it would be easier but on my um, so this is my last finish oh come let us adore him I really like the it was a variegated thread uh, I think it was a week's a variegated thread for the church and I really do like the way that has um, complemented the building in this one. Um, the fabric as well is a fabric flare fabric. It's, as you can tell by the colour, it's a raw um, effect, like a raw uh, linen effect. But it has actually got, not like opalescent fabric, it has actually got like every now and again these silver flecks in it and I actually quite like that and that is something that I've made a note of although I couldn't tell you exactly what the fabric is um, it is something I've made a note of um, because if you wanted to do a sampler you might not necessarily want to do it on the opalescent fabric because although the opalescent fabric is very sparkly and lovely um, it is more uniform sparkle the whole thing is sparkly whereas with this it has just every like it's it's not as um, oh dear words are escaping me today. Um, it's not as um, obvious. It's not as so evenly patterned or spaced with the opalescent. It's more random. Which if you wanted to do something like a primitive pattern or like a sampler, but you just wanted that hint of something special, then this fabric is ideal because it's not so obvious that it's so. Um, sparkly all over um, so that is definitely some a fabric that I would be interested in working on again um, because I tend to prefer the Quaker style and the samplers and the more primitive patterns as well as the cutesy ones um, that is a fabric that I would be interested in using again then we have literally I've only got a few more words on the bottom so the stockings were hung by the chimney with care is what will be written so that's literally just the words I've got to put on the bottom of that one and then I'll be up to date so really that's um, a family day of stitching as in 
at home but still having to do things with the family um, and try and squeeze um, stitching in between. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned. I should be able to get that done as there will probably be another release being um, shipped out to me soon. I'll get a notification because I pay for um, the, the pattern to be sent with the fabric and with any threads that um, I need to be topped up with or any new ones that um, they're using and in that and another pattern. So yeah, basically. Um, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with just knowing that I've just got a couple of words left. I do actually, because I keep it in this little pouch, I, I can, although I very rarely get the chance, I can actually, I do occasionally take it to work with me in the hope that I will want to um, pick it up and stitch it if I get the time. I don't, but, you know, here's hoping. So to my next project of breaking the rules as such, when, when I was getting really down about my mirror, um, and just feeling that it was a trial. Um, I was really interested at the time, if you watched any of my previous videos, um, in doing um, Save the Stitches, which is a black work piece. And then in March, she launched um, Box of Delights. These are all freebie patterns. These um, are by a designer, a black work designer called Liz Armand. She's absolutely amazing. Um, and as soon as I read it, I thought, oh, this suits me because I do like food orientated <laughs> cross stitch for some reason um, and I thought oh yeah the, I know what, exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to use um, my antique silks which I get from um, Jodry Designs um, and I'm going to put them uh, as if it's a box of delights I also received some fabric from Sparklies I'm in part of the fabric of the month club from Sparklies and this was actually the January um, edition of the fabric of the month which is this really lovely baby pinks mottled baby pinks colour and as soon as I see the box of delights I knew what fabric I wanted to use and the effect that I wanted there is a company that um, is a French company um, but they they do have a couple of outlets in the UK called um, Le Dore which particularly specialise in petit fours which are mini mini cakes and uh, the macaron which is um, they're awesome. They're really lovely. Um, but they, their actual um, design of their company and their website and things like that, they've actually made books as well on recipes of what that they use and things, is this um, sort of um, washed out pastel Baroque style. So you'll get these baby pinks but with like this heavily gold brocade and, and things. And I thought, oh, I'd love with all the different colours of the Jodry Designs antique threads, I'd like to and to use that sort of design theory within this box of delights. So let's see what the best way to do this is. Um, so that's what I did. So I've actually stitched the border in a petite treasure braid so that's in a gold I don't know if you can tell let me see that's in a gold and then each one each box of the lights has accents of gold in it obviously each um, section um, is one Jodry Designs thread um, silk thread and then I've used some matte brown Mill Hill beads because I'm thinking chocolate, you know, um, with sweets. And then when I've seen a plain pattern where it doesn't have beads or any gold, for example, this one. I know the lighting's not good today. Um, I've literally just stitched it in a plain DMC thread and I've, I've chosen a colour, the outlines are stitched in a plain dark DMC thread and the inside I've picked um, a particular colour to, which is like a caramelly colour to keep the lightness and I thought well that will help with the randomness of it all um, and I will stitch basically the um, each if it's just got a plain pattern of black work then I will stitch that in just a plain DMC thread if it includes a little bit of metallic and if it includes some beads it's almost like a special chocolate so that's when I'll use the Jodry Designs um, antique silks and um, the Mill Hill beads if the beads are called for it um, 
on the patterns she gives you um, for each section she gives you um, like a, as if you was doing it monochromatic so a black and white um, pattern um, as if you was just doing it black and white and then she also gives you a colour um, pattern as well which would give you the idea of mixing it up I actually I find it easier to follow the black and white pattern even though I'm using colour just because I find it easier to distinguish that's personal preference but I just find it easier to distinguish I also print off my patterns um, that may change as I am considering making an investment into a uh, iPad but I doubt it I do like marking off my patterns and I know you can I know there's programs and there's been um, good good videos on how to use um, those programs um, and mark off and you can enlarge and that's great uh, and all these sort of things but a little bit old school and I'm still using printed patterns just because that's just how I feel more comfortable working but yeah so that is my so far my box of delights there is actually a third instalment which will be coming which will be coming and here coming down here yet to come uh, which I haven't stitched yet but um, like I said I'm not too concerned I can normally get through this reasonably quickly not that it's a race but I can get through it reasonably quickly even if I set myself a target of just doing one of the shapes a day then there's six shapes so that's six days um, and more often than not they don't take that long to stitch so I can do that in an evening after I've got home from work and done dinner and things like that so um, but yeah so that's my choice um, for the um, Box of Delights Liz Armand black work piece um, and my reasoning behind it I do post it quite often on Instagram my Instagram name is Simply Couture Collections um, if you don't already follow me on there and um, please feel free to I am going to try and make a note of uh, anything that I try and mention down below as to links that might be pushing it because I'm not computer literate so that'd be why um, Oh, I am at some point, going back to the Box of Delights, there isn't that many antique silks that Jodry Designs has released yet. Um, so m I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. My plan of action is I'll keep going until I run out of the silk options that I have because I have every single one. Um, because bear in mind that maybe one or two can actually just be the plain DMC. Um, and then my plan of action is just to continue to stitch it but maybe not fill them only fill the ones that I know I'm going to be using the plain DMC for and continue to do that and wait for her to release more um, I mean she may not she may choose not to release more if that's the case then what I may do is um, decide that I might um, look at other silks um, from different ranges and um, replace them like that but at the moment I just thought I'll just I'm going with the flow I don't want to overthink it I'm just going with the flow and what makes me feel happy about what I'm stitching at the time um, looking at it my plan of action will probably be I will turn it into some sort of cushion to, as a um, decorative bed cushion or something like that um, at the end and I, I can envision it with um, really over the top you know with um, gold brocade and big gold tassels on the edge of the cushion you know if you're gonna go for it go for it so yeah, that's my my plan as far as the save the stitches, uh, not save the stitches. Sorry, box of delights goes. So they're my main three projects that I'm working on at the moment. I have um, bought some stash. Um, to be fair, I'm not going to go through it all because it's bits and bits of things. So, but with the main focus of actually kitting up what I already have and want to stitch so more often than not if I'm ordering something then it may be actually for three or four different patterns each time and then I'm just adding to them so that when I, when I come to need to when I finish my mirabilia and I come to have a sort of a gap um, then I've got choices as to what I want to stitch next um, 
my biggest piece this is actually all kitted up except for the fabric only because I can't decide what I want to stitch on uh, what fabric I want to stitch yet is the blend and place but as I said literally all of it is um, I've got all the threads and the beads and I couldn't swap out the krennic so there's more krennic in there um, sorry about the glare but this is just for those that don't know this is the Glendon place this will probably be my next um, big project and this may actually get waylaid until January you know um, the idea of I quite like the idea of a new year new start on the 1st of January so this may get waylaid till then because not that I have massive time restraints but I have to sort of think about what I'm going to be doing or what I want to stitch I don't want to have loads of um, whips as such um, and I have got a Christmassy whip that I started in December of last year but now, now that my job role has changed and I do work in retail so November December uh, busy months I'm, my plan of action was to bring it out November December and basically keep doing that until it's finished which was my primitive hair Dickens design Christmas Carol so technically I've only really got till November um, because for the amount of time that I actually do get to stitch in those months, one project is all I'm going to be able to work on. So um, that has been allocated that time. So realistically, this being May, I've not even finished the Mirabilia yet. I'm thinking this will probably end up being um, maybe my new year, new start. So which is why I'm in no rush to pick the fabric um, as yet. I kind of have an idea of what I want um, fabric wise, but I'm not in any rush quite so yet to pick the fabric because um, I don't have the time <laughs> to do it quite yet. So uh, one last project, I don't actually know because of there was a gap between filming whether anyone actually see this in full, I know I put it on Instagram but this is my um, strawberry cheesecake sampler where it was my first attempt at speciality stitches and I'm really pleased with how that come out. It's very cutesy and I like um, that design, that sort of design concept and things like that. I did change it a little bit. It, it did actually call for the beads that are here on the strawberry cheesecakes and things, um, but it wanted stars at the top um, here. And it wasn't that I um, wouldn't have done those speciality stitches because actually as they go, they're not that difficult. Um, but it was more because I just felt that it was bead heavy down the bottom because they wanted you to put beads in the lazy daisies they wanted beads in the lazy daisies and then obviously there was um, the cherries on top of the mini cheesecake and then the top was just with no beads on it at all so I actually replaced the stars with the beads here so I fit, for me that just sort of evened it out top middle and bottom um, with that piece, I was considering getting it framed, um, but actually now I look at it, it, I might prefer it as a wall hanging and get a nice hanger. So um, potentially that that is on my list of um, finished finishes. That uh, um, my plan of action is there, and then maybe I can swap it out every now and again. Again, Tara C, amazing video on doing that, so I will revisit that just to. Um, enlighten myself again of how I would approach that situation. Um, so on to fabric as such and my plan which is probably set to change but my plan to do after I finish the Mirabilia. Um, so but let's start with the fabric. So I can't I think I've probably missed months but this was um, the April's fabric of the month um, from Sparkly's which is a club that um, I chose to join. Um, this one's actually called Moonlighting. I love it. It's blues, loads of different blues. I actually order it in um, 28 Count Brittany and I'm really pleased. I've discussed before in my last video, um, I've ordered from the main UK designers and I've always been pleased. My Mirabilia is stitched on a Crafty Kitten. Um, I use um, the Jodrew Design Silk Threads for um, my Box of Delights. Um, I'm always pleased with their service and I'm always pleased with the products that I get. So actually, if you're thinking about ordering from the UK, then I've, n I've not had a problem with any of the suppliers um, personally um, and, and to this date. And I've been very pleased with the fabrics. 
um, that I've got. I I did have a plan with these with these fabrics as such, where because you don't know what you're getting, it's fabric of the month. Um, this one is actually a fabric, um, which is the moonlighting fabric. Um, I probably will. Sorry, I think that's my phone. I probably will. Yes, it is. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is stitching maybe some of the pixies on here, Nora, Cor Nora Corbett's pixies, um, because you, I like the background and I do like to play with colour. So actually, one of the ones that I've looked at and um, would consider stitching on here is Holly, the Holly um, Nora Corbett pixie. So I haven't got her kitted up or anything like that. And again, I was thinking mm, that could be a January first start, but then if Glendon Place ends up taking that. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just go with the flow is my plan of action. You never know, there might be a project that I go, actually, I would prefer to use this. So I never worry too much about these things. So, yeah, these come in little baggies, and I keep them in the little baggies, so it tells me all the information that I need to know on this. So I don't bother marking any of this. But just for reference, um, which I've actually not pulled out of the bag. See, that's just typical. Um, just for reference, there is actually a um, project I did show you, but I'm actually leaning on the Ottoman <laughs> that I keep all my stitchy stuff in, so I'm not going to lift it all out and move it all for you, because that's just too much hassle. That makes you motion sickness. Um, and... Every now and again, I do look for deals on uh, through the companies and things like that, and I know what I like. So if I see something on deal that I'll be interested to stitch, then I will tend to order it and then try and to keep my stash acquisition down at the same time, and always being mindful of you know I don't want to get to a point where I'm never going to be able to stitch all of these things. So I try to keep it at a, like you know a reasonable level. But I have every now and again looked at. Um, eBay and to get fabrics and things and have ordered fabrics from eBay so there's no surprise there I mean for example this is a um, linen from Witch Out Perm in linen it's like a confederate grey colour and I love it and there's already a couple of projects that I know that can go on here now as discussed before um, I always mark when it's when it's loose fabric like this and I'm getting it from eBay um, obviously other than checking the stitches uh, to make sure that the person that's posted it has got it right as well um, when you get it um, I always stitch don't know if you can see um, the count so that's 32 count in Roman numerals um, so that I know just by looking at it that it's 32 count um, straight away but what I did notice is that you get obviously different companies different fabrics so they can all be like 28 count but one's um, from one company like Zweigart and the other one from another company so and then they'll have different effects and what you prefer and blah 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 and that I wasn't keeping a note of so much and I didn't want to stitch it on there because that would just be like a mission in itself so what I've actually done is that when I've searched the edges um, on my sewing machine I've actually just a little bit of random ribbon I've written I don't know if you can see that I've written what it is, what the fabric is on that ribbon, because I can always take that ribbon off. I mean, as long as you put it towards the end, you're not generally going to stitch that close to the end anyway. Um, and then that helps me um, know what the company is as well and the sort of fabric it is. I mean, this is pretty obvious because it's so stiff, um, you can tell, and just by looking at it, that it's linen. But I find that, just as a record, I find that helpful to have these little tags um, because... I know exactly what it is, whether it be Quaker cloth or anything like that. So not only do I know the count, but I also know the fabric style. So for example, this one's 36 count and it's an Edinburgh linen, which is like a cream mottled cream linen. So yeah, it's fraying already, but I have actually searched all down here. I tend to try and keep on top of that as well and I, I feel because I don't generally use a sewing machine I feel it's good practice for when I come to actually be making things like the bunting and possibly wall hangings 
if I can get the practice in just by doing something like surging, then that's going to be helpful to me. But yeah, so, and then there I've written Edinburgh Linen, just on the ribbon. And I find that that's a lot easier because I can directly relate and link to uh, the fabrics and I know exactly what they are. So, I believe that is the end of my floss tube video. Thank you so much for um, my new subscriptions and thank you to my long-suffering um, subscribers. Um, I love um, watching your comments, even though I don't always get to, ha uh, to answer back. Um, I do because sometimes I feel like, um, for some reason in my brain, if it's past midnight, it's past midnight everywhere, <laughs> so I don't think that to, to, I feel like it's text. So like, I think, oh, we better not do that now. And then I end up just getting waylaid. I don't know why that doesn't make any common sense I know that but you know so I do appreciate I do read all your comments and I do really appreciate it and I'm loving watching all your new videos and hello to all you new subscribers and new floss tubers it's great and I love it and I love looking at your choices your patterns and how you change things or even if you don't um, I really I, I just really enjoy this community so a big heartfelt thank you and um, hopefully it will be the end of May and I won't leave it too long until I speak to you again. So, happy stitching um, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.